So we'll go with David Cabal's question first. He asks, "How do you, have you guys ever done a GoBots episode? I'd love to hear your opinion on the toy line cartoon and their strengths compared to Transformers. Also, which GoBot or GoBots was your favorite? Uh, well, I'll just answer first. We've never talked about GoBots in the past, except for like a, when like TFCon possibly did our excuse. Yeah. That was probably the only time we ever touched on it. I'll let Wendell go first with the answering of the questions, though. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, so for uh, Mr. Cabal, um, no, I don't. No, I don't think I've ever done a uh, trend, uh, GoBots episode. Um, I have seen bits and pieces of GoBots. Uh, not necessarily from back in the day, but from on YouTube. I think I was a bit too young for GoBots, basically. Um, when I was around, we were just getting the, I think, uh, Generation 2, and I was watching parts of the third series, uh, the third season of Transformers through VHS from my local video store. Uh, so there was, I didn't realize there was GoBots up until that point. It's only when I started becoming a part of this group that everyone's talking about GoBots and stuff. But before that, um, I knew more about Machine Robo from Daniel, mm. uh, from Proto Man, basically, and he had, he had two episodes or three uh, It was two VHSs that? that had uh, yeah. four episodes each. Mm. And that and we got from our local uh, anime store back in the day. And I'll yep, get into yep. that with me, but yeah. And so that was basic, basic more so my... Um, Introduction to uh, GoBots, but more so the Japanese side. Um, so, I think that, I mean, I back in the day, I'm sure, like as we were, uh, me and Dan, uh, me and Proto Man were talking beforehand before we started the recording. Um, what was it? There was 600 yen line. Yeah, the basically? 600 series line. Yeah. Yeah, and so uh, those things are pretty cool. Like they come in like these, not matchbooks, but like, how would I put it? I would put it like double cassette container books like boxes yeah basically. they were small yeah they were small so I thought that was pretty cool that the packaging was small and compact and like when keep in mind Wendell's referring to the machine Robo releases N- not yeah. the, the Tonka 1983-84 more card back based ones Exactly. I, I don't know yeah, because, much about well, I, GoBots. I don't blame you American because GoBots. like while while was, even someone who was born in the mid 80s you could still experience G1 because of G2 and the lingering of season three. Transformers never really went away. And then, and but then also there was also VHSs. Um, the VHSs, the toys were still around, but like there were still different types of toys. Yeah, if you had a Zellers, so you always had lingering toys. Uh, what was <laughs> there was like Zellers series. Yeah. I remember the first um, ones I had was the uh, what was the Micro Machine ones called Micro again? Masters. The MicroMasters. I had a lot. Well, I didn't have a lot. Excuse me. Let me cut that back. I had Get like, <laughs> I had, I had, yeah, I had four like that came in a set. MicroMasters. Yeah, came in sets of four. Yeah. And then I had the uh, Overlord, which was Overload. The trailer. Overload. So he came with the trailer, and I also had one of them that came with a play set, basically. And the play set was like, it looked like, uh. It looked like a yellow crane, and it was like like a dig site, but then the crane would transform into like a communications tower kind of thing. Like the playset would transform into a communications tower, and then the little guy was um, like. You're uh, talking about MicroMasters. Oh, yeah. you're talking about Ironworks. Okay. Yeah, the Ironworks. Okay, series. so that's, that's why. I, I have, at that's... first I'm like, is he talking about Erector? And I'm like, no way, communications. Uh, no, no. Ironworks was like a crane uh, crane set, and then it like became like a windmill slash communication tower. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. exactly that. And so, and I remember when I bought that from Consumers Distributing, it also came with a VHS of uh, Optimus Prime, The Return of Optimus. Oh, Prime. that's how you that's, got it. Interesting. Yeah, that's how I got okay. it. <laughs> the plot thickens so, now. So that's how I got that. Uh, so that so I, it was there, the, in, the entryway to Transformers was way easier than GoBots at that oh, time. Well, yeah, GoBots it also because it kind of really started to fade out by eighty six, eighty seven, and then mm-hmm. because it never came back, there was no lingering of it. Where where Transformers I, because of G two, um, you know, the toys would linger around and stuff. I mean, it's Wendell was born in eighty six, so uh, it's gonna be eighty five. So so. GoBots was already on its way out, you know, like permanently on its way out, where even though Transformers was, you know, fictionally on its way out in 86 and 87, 
it still was around toy wise and G2 re, you know reestablished that and and if you lived in Canada and you had a Zellers um toys would be there forever you know you yeah. like I would not be surprised if like back in like oh god like 1990 if you went into Zellers and found G1 stuff you know like and when I mean G1 I mean like 86 G1 stuff like mm, stuff would geez. just link well how many times have we gone to Zellers where we've seen toys that were 5 to 10 years old <laughs> it, it would true, always true. happen. Like, oh, I I remember picking up Beast Wars toys in, during Revenge of the Fallen. Like, I remember I picked up a mm. mint on card drill bit for during Dear Revenge Lord. of the Fallen. Just, just to give an idea of how much stuff just sits there, you know, forever. But to but to be very fair, let's. I'm gonna go back to the yeah. topic <laughs> of GoBots because I'm trying yeah. to. I'm going all over the place. Uh, do, 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 do. That, from a little I've seen of GoBots, I think the Rock Lords movie was the most I've mm-hmm. seen, and I wasn't able to stick around for most of the Rock Lords movie. Um, I have messed around with a few of the Rock Lords. I had a friend's brother uh, that was like hunting for them at uh, TFCon, and he managed to find one of them that he had as a kid, basically. So that was pretty cool, like just seeing how they turn into rocks and kind of you could put them anywhere, and then you come back and you can open them up and they're like a uh, robot, basically. Um, uh, I do. I should give it a fair shake. To be very honest, uh, I do have the Rock Lords movie, so I'll give it a watch. I'll definitely give it a watch. Like seeing everyone that had like fond memories of it was pretty cool at TFCon. But uh, like I said, I was able to stick around. I do have one GoBot GoBot slash uh, Machine Robo toy. Um, a friend of mine picked it up for me at a pawn shop. She thought she got it for me for my birthday. She thought it was a Transformer. And when she handed it to me, I was like, oh, it's not a Transformer. She's like, oh, I'm so sorry. I was like, no, no, no. It's really cool. It's a, it's a GoBot, but it's super mint. Like, I was very surprised by, like, everything is still here. Uh, maybe some parts are a little bit loose, but they're not crazy loose. It's very interesting. And it's almost like this kid never played with it. And, like, the paint's still there and everything. It's spoons, basically. Yeah, the, the, cra- the uh, forklift. The forklift. That everyone knows today. So... And it's very charming. I like oh, it Oh, yeah, a lot. well, it's, it's a unique I, I, design. I, sh- I was very appreciative of it. Die-cast so. little forklifts there. It's cool. Like, it's a little compact. It's like the precursor to uh, to um, Scouts, basically, as, as I, I would say. Well, there was, yeah, there was a Scout deadlift that was based off of Spoons, more or less, so, from the uh, Revenge of the Fallen line. Mm-hmm. But And um, I would say, so far, Spoons is my favorite. <laughs> Set, I, sentimental reasons. Right sentimental yeah. value, yeah. Um, for me, um, my my encounters with GoBots, uh, I, a, as a kid, I never saw the show. I, I didn't really have much recollection of ever seeing the show as a kid. Like Transformers, easily season three I saw. I saw Generation 2, which filled me in with season one and two. But I never saw the cartoon. But the weird thing is, growing up, though... I had GoBot toys. I had um, Dive Dive, which was the submarine. I had um, trying to remember who was 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 there a big giant base that had all four? Yeah, that, that was part of GoBots. Too? That's the that's the uh, Guardian HQ. I think I might have interacted with the Guardian HQ as a kid, but just never knew Unless what it was. Unless you thought it was like the At At from Star Wars. <laughs> um, I don't. Maybe a lot I'm, of people like a, mixed the two up. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's just like I I I I had like bootleg GoBots. As much as that sounds crazy, like I've encountered those as a kid, thinking they were Transformers. But it's like, yeah, there was actually bootlegs of GoBot toys. Also, where it's like, here's Slicks, who was one of the GoBots. But yeah, here's like a a yellow and orange version of it, made out of cheap plastic. Like I had a lot of those mm. growing up, and they got destroyed or lost. They were mixed in with many sandbox battles. The only surviving GoBot from my childhood is that Dive Dive that I speak of. Um, but it, what my my jump into GoBots really wasn't until I got back into Transformers back in 1996 because of Beast Wars. I started like really hitting up the garage sales and stuff and picking up any robots, you know, just because, you know, mm. the internet was in its infancy. I was trying to re-educate myself. So I picked up a whole bunch of GoBots thinking they were Transformers, and one that I picked up was Fightor, which is the, the, the jet-looking one that's red. And I picked up all these GoBots, didn't really think much of it. Long story short, 
I'm at the arcade one day, the same arcade me and Wendell used to go to called Sci-Fi Anime. I was standing waiting in line. We were playing Neo Geo, I think, at the time. And mm-hmm. at this arcade, it also had anime VHSs for rent. And I was just kind of waiting in line, staring at the anime VHS wall. And I saw these two VHSs, Machine Robo. And it caught my eye because on the cover of it, there was Fightor. And I was like, what the hell? Why is that, that GoBot robot on the cover of this box and I turned it around and I saw Screwhead the other GoBot that's like the screw guy mm. and I was like what the fuck's going on here you know and I was like what the hell is this I'm looking around I don't see Bandai written in the small text or anything I'm like Machine Robo I gotta rent this This, you know I rent it it blows my mind all these GoBot characters are there and I'm like what the hell is this I go on the internet and I learn oh you know GoBots were originally the line called Machine Robo it blows my mind I start doing tons of research I end up fall- Go Machine Robo is an amazing series by the way um, way better than GoBots it's it's your typical anime fair that was done by the guys who worked on Bubblegum Crisis and everything so very did it ever finish? no it finished yeah it, it- I mean, do we ever get it translated? Oh, no, did anyone unfortunately, ever... Machine Robo, the VHSs, there was only the two VHSs, and then when the company that released those VHSs got into DVDs, they released three DVDs that had, you know, so we got four more episodes, essentially, but they never completed the 52 run, essentially. Right. And then there was a sequel series and, and two little OVA series. It was huge in Japan, Machine Robo. It was very mm. popular. Here, not so much so, because it got brought in as GoBots, Hanna-Barbera did their thing with the animation, and that was it. It buried itself. Where in Japan, it had, you know, the, the human characters ended up getting their own spin-off series, and, and the robots got their own uh, new series, and battle hackers, and there's even modern interpretations of Machine Robo today. There's Machine Robo mm-hmm. Rescue, and then there's Machine Robo Mujinbine. Like, today, there still is Machine Robo stuff. The point is, is that, like, I got huge into it. I went online. I found, like, the Romstol figure. I, I bought him. Like, I... I have ended up falling in love with Machine Robo because it was a sentient robot series that wasn't Transformers that was pretty badass, you know? Yeah, it's pretty yeah, violent. It's, well, Extremely exactly. violent. Exactly. It's pretty <laughs> badass. And I was like, you know what, this is, you know, when you find, and this, I think I discovered this in like 1998, 99, it really, um, it really opens up like, you know, a, a whole new venue of, of cool mecha stuff to watch. And this is like before torrents and the internet where everything was so easy to get today and you know youtube didn't exist yet so it was it was a nice you know alternative to transformers to watch and there was as as little as i could find online to enjoy of it and i picked up a lot of machine robo stuff since then and ironically this question um as it's being asked this year is is the 30th anniversary of revenge of chronos the machine robo anime and they're going to be releasing a, I, I want to call it a classic slash masterpiece esque line based on those old GoBot machine robo designs. So keep an eye out for those in the future. Those are going to look amazing. Uh, the, what else was the. Um, its strengths? Well, GoBots didn't have many strengths in terms of animation or storytelling. Uh, if you had to ask me who my favorite character was, I liked Vanguard from the TV series only because he was the only character that was. I don't know. I, I thought he was someone that belonged in Transformers. Like he was, he he felt like a Sunstreaker kind of character or a Hot Rod kind of character that actually had personality that belonged in, say, the Transformers universe. Where I found a lot of the GoBots um, were more characters just based off of uh, speech impediments or like this is the gruff guy, this is the mm-hmm. guy who repeats himself, this is that. You know, and it, there wasn't much to it. Where in Machine Robo, that's a different story. My favorite character was Jet. Which was the Fightor mold? He was awesome. He was a sort, oh yeah, sword yeah, wielding yeah. dude. He's, he's really cool. And Rom Stoll was awesome. If you could pick up that toy, uh, they have the uh, Soul of Chikokin version, which is like two hundred dollars. It's like a masterpiece, but another amazing character, an amazing toy. But yeah, that's GoBots for us, <laughs> more or less. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, um, I remember when you were telling me about uh, the the Mugenbein series. I was like, what? And then the fact that it's almost like a build-a-block, yeah, it, but with robots It's like and it, stuff. it went more in a, a Lego kind of route. I don't even, not even Lego, but, you know, like a more of a building customization kind of direction. Like yeah. They, they, you know, the evolution of that brand in Japan kind of changed over the years because they tried to do Machine Robo Rescue, which was a straight-up, like, Sentai, sentient robot kind of series. It didn't really mm-hmm. do well in Japan, and uh, Hasbro kind of cock-blocked them with the registration of the name, which was, wasn't cool, because 
during the universe line they did they registered machine robot rescue so, oh yeah yeah so that's that true was cool of them um so they were screwed there they couldn't even bring it to america and then they did um oh God, there was something they did mujinbine and mujinbine was like oh we're not going to do a tv series we'll do some cg shorts and it's just going to be more of a creative thing and mm. it's 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 inexpensive they're fun um but they're more parts formers than they are transformers if anything yeah you pull them apart you yeah. bring them back together kind of so thing like you know so it's a, it's 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 a, it's very different than its humble beginning so to speak it's it came out a different way 30 years later so but who knows <laughs> with the 30th anniversary um if these toys sell well they might uh, reinvigorate the franchise who knows